Mills is now a veteran in the Super Tourers, 40 years old and in his sixth season, and his experience is starting to pay dividends. He's having his best year ever, fifth in the Drivers' Championship, third in the Teams' Championship, and leading in the Independence Cup. The results match the more professional approach and look. Well, we're trying to take our team to another level, to a, a higher level, and I think that it starts with presentation. Um, you know, in the hotel game, it's location, location, location. Here, in this game, it's preparation, preparation, preparation. On paper, the two Mondeos are humbled by the more modern machinery around them. The two are 94 and 95 spec cars running without factory support and a budget that can't compare with Volvo, Audi or even Paul Morris's BMW. Well, I'm not privy to what their budget is, but I mean, our budget would be beer money compared to theirs. I mean, we really do make $10 do, you know, $100 work. It's just the way that it is. And uh, there's a lot of aspects that, you know, without revealing all your dirty laundry, that um, there's members of the team that have gone above and beyond the call of duty just to make it all happen. And, uh, you know, we're hoping for better things in the future, so we're pressing on with it. One thing that has made a difference this year for independents like Peter Hills is control tyres provided by Yokohama. With everyone on the same rubber, the bigger budget teams no longer have the advantage they once had. The Habs have kind of come back a second and a half and the have nots have picked up a second, so, you know, we've bridged the gap by two and a half seconds. And I think that at Malala in the wet, it showed that uh, you don't need to be a factory-funded team to uh, post good results. Another change for the team is in the management. Former Toyota and Peugeot team manager Mike Quinn has joined the outfit and Hills attributes much of the improvement to his input. We had a good little team in the years gone by, but I think we suffered a little bit from the pressures of finance and all the rest of it. But there's nothing like experience. I mean, you just can't get the experience as much as hard as you try. I mean, we try very hard and, and making the break was a difficult decision, but we felt that if we wanted to go a little bit further, then we needed somebody that already had the experience. What the team needed was somebody that knew what the team needed. The other new face in the team is that of 18-year-old Dean Canto, who drove a WRX Subaru in the GTP series last year. For the rookie, the step into the Mondeos is a big leap, and judging by the constant smile on his face, he's enjoying the experience. This is a real race car, whereas last year I was just driving a road car, half made to a race car. These cars are a lot more responsive, you've got a lot more things you can adjust, like sway bars and brake bias, and the brakes are just outstanding on them. For Peter Hills and his modest team, 1999 is proving very successful, and there seems little doubt even more lies ahead. Certainly, Hills is looking to the possibilities beyond the immediate future. And unlike the team budget, his ambitions are not so modest. Well, longer term, we'd like to uh, update vehicles. We'd like to get some more modern vehicles and uh, go for the championship. Simple as that. Motor Raceway in Ned Kelly Country. We're preparing for race nine of the BOC Gases Australian Super Touring Championship. Well, the 3K Winton layout is one of the tightest in Australia. Let's go on board with Paul Morris for a hot lap. Okay, welcome aboard the Vasari BMW for a flying lap around the Winton circuit. Coming up onto the start finish straight now. I'm just about to go across the strike into these two right hand corners through the first one in third gear the next right hand corner in third gear we take a run up to the sweeper which is the fastest corner on the track into the sweeper in fourth holding the car in line very slippery on the outside of the track there and we come into the section of the track called the S's coming up to John Henderson here in the front wheel drive Vectra. Coming into the last corner in the S's. Onto the back straight, which is a fairly long black back straight. Running into fifth gear. Back down to second gear for another short straight. Up into another series of two right hand corners. We'll just reach fifth gear before we change back down to second. 
third, fourth, back into second. Coming onto the pitch straight. At the end of the pitch straight, this is left and a right hand corner, which leads back up onto the start finish straight. We'll take this in third. On the power, nice and early. Back over the start finish line. There you have it, a flying lap of the Winton Motor Raceway. Thank you, Paul, and good luck today. We'll see you in the race. We'll look forward to that. Brad Jones on the front row with Paul Morris and Charles Stewart is there. Well, Brad, I guess it's been a long time since you've been in this position in a race uh, out here in the front row. Well, it's been a real experience this weekend, yeah. It's the first time all year that we've um, that we've been on the front row, and uh, unfortunately, I'm having a little trouble getting the car off the line. I got a good start in the first one and a not-so-good start in the second one, but managed to hang on to second, so we'll have to see what happens in this one. Well, I think this one's going to be far tougher. Peter Hills there is set to go in the Ford Mondeo. He leads the Independence Cup Series. And as they move off on the warm-up lap, let's check out the grid for you. On pole position, it's Brad Jones in the Audi, and alongside will be Paul Morris in the Versace. BMW 320. Row two made up of Jimmy Richards in the Volvo and Matt Coleman the second of the Audis. Which brings us to row number three. Mark Adderton in the Volvo and Peter Hills the independent in the Ford Mondeo. Row number four, Anthony Robson in car number five and John Henderson in the Vectra out of position number eight. Row number five made up of Dean Cato the second of the independents in the Mondeo and David Auger in the Alpha 155. Row six brings together Tony Newman in car number ten and Luke Searle in car number thirty. Row number seven Aaron McGill in the Trinidad machine and Malcolm Ray in car number 77 leaving Claude Elias in car number 97 at the tail of the field. This should be a beauty. Race number nine of the series. Everything just about ready to go. Keep an eye on Paul Morris. The engine revs come up. Brad Jones on the inside, racing, and Morris off like a firecracker. Gets through very, very smartly to leave them down the front straight away. Brad Jones moves over just a little bit, drops into second. Matthew Coleman up amongst them there with Jimmy Richards, so we've got a great start. Yes, a fabulous start again by Paul Morris. He certainly knows how to do that. Not such a good go here by Matthew Coleman. Cold tires, got it a little bit into an oversteer slide. Cost him dearly. And here we are with Brad Jones. It's a big gap that Morris has got already. He's in a spot of bother here. The Audis obviously tires are bothering them here on the very opening laps. Both drivers having difficulties. Oh, gee, that's not what Brad, Brad, Brad wanted today. Deficit for uh, Brad to catch up now. He's thrown that position away. Malcolm Ray coming up on the inside of him there. So Brad Jones has dropped back about six or eight positions. And he'll have to fight back through the independence there as they go through Searle there. Auger as well. And car number 23, the Vasari BMW 320, doing very well as John Henderson comes on the inside here of Hills as they run down the uh, the opposite side of the pit straight here. And these two have been tussling all day. I think John Henderson's getting a little tired of it. He'd like to get on top of this scrap. Really trying his best, doing well. Oh, oh he's no. trying a bit too hard. Oh, just just kiss the tire wall. Uh, and the entrance to the uh, the pit area there. So lucky not to hurt his car too much, but uh, the penalty for being a bit too aggressive. You have to stay on the tarmac, Mike. Oh dearie me! How close was that, Dean Canto? Coming out of that pit turn, almost got the edge of the concrete wall. Here's Brad Jones battling back through the pack. Just takes David Auger and the Alpha 155. So Brad's got a lot of work to do. Let's have a look at this in the replay as we head off. This is Jim Richards race camp. And we follow Jim off the line as Paul Morris gets away through there pretty smartly up uh, on the tail of uh, Matthew Coleman. Little zip and a little tap as we head. Oh, another one, Mike, definitely. Oh. We might have been unkind to him describing that as cold tires. He got a helping hand there in turn two. Have a look at Matthew Coleman's race cam now. He carries one of the BOC gases units. So he heads down the front straightaway, goes to turn right into the corner. He's okay so far. Down the little shot shoot. Into the next corner. Oh, that's a hit. We heard and it. And around he goes. He actually, he recovered quite quite oh. effectively, so I guess we know who the culprit was. And a replay now from John Henderson's car. 
John gets amongst them pretty quick as they come down here. Yes, he's positioning himself on the right-hand side of the track. This is so far so good. So far so good. No, it was the Volvo that gave uh, Coleman a tap. Uh, Henderson was in innocent. Well, I think uh, Jim's been tapped a couple of times at uh, Winter this weekend, and that was one of those little ones that maybe he uh, delivered back. There's the scrap continuing Searle. 44 coming up through there, Dean Cantor. So Brad Jones has got his hands full clearing the independence here after that spin in the opening lap of the circuit. Here he comes up on the inside. He's going to have a go. Left-hander here under brakes. He better be on them. He's done it. Not quite totally. He's had to be a bit pushy. That was a payback for something in one of the earlier rounds, yeah, I think. A little bit of elbow room there. That's what that's called. Morris, Adderton, Richards, Coleman, Hills and Robson. That's the order. As they head down out of turn number one, a little downhill run to turn two. Jones, Searle in eighth spot. Then it's Cantor, Organ, McGill, and Malcolm Ray rounds out the even dozen. Jim Richards, third position. Down the short shoot, right-hander. He's moving up with his teammate here, Mark Adderton. Goes to the outside of him. Like a flash. Good uh, race cam coverage there from uh, both Volvos. So Adderton drops one back, and the thing to be decided here is whether or not Jim's got enough stick in the Volvo to be able to catch and run down um, that man, Morris. Brad Jones, as we go on board with his race cam, shows you just how busy you are here at Winton. He's having a big look at what's on board, more so than he is looking out the windscreen, so plenty of information there that he wants to know about. Here he comes up on Peter Hills, the leader of the Independence Cup. That was smooth, straight down the inside. Takes one position away from Peter Hills in car number 88 and moves up past the start finishing line. Morris, the leader from Richards. Mark Adderton is next, followed by Coleman. Jones is next. He's up to fifth, and that drops Peter Hills back one spot. himself about this stage seeing how well he's going through the field realizing that that opening lap Popa really has hurt him it's left Paul Morris out here to do what he wants a possible threat from Jim Richards here but uh, still not really looking uh, too much of a worry well the thing that will probably come into Jim's uh, hands a little later this is the pit stop at this moment though Morris is doing what he does best he always makes a brilliant start and when he does make that brilliant start he can open up almost a one to 200 meter lead over the field Robson meantime is closing on Peter Hills so we have a battle of the independents the pit stop window is open and that tells you the drivers can now come in and do their compulsory pit stop in the race any time from now so battle damage on the Mondale but still running well Peter Hills, a uh, long-time supporter of this championship and current points leader in the Independence Cup. He left also rear say, saves on rubber, doesn't yeah, he? On that left rear hang, you'll be able to use that one. Oh, that, that's both sides, side, so that's a, a, a pair there that can be used for testing next week. I used to have a dog, couldn't train him to do that. Well, it looks like it's pit time, so the window of opportunity is open for Paul Morris and Jimmy Richards. Now, it was said earlier that this race could be won in the pits at Winton. I'll bet you it will be. Morris comes in and closing up behind him is Jimmy Richards as they take their compulsory pit stop. Good strategy here, Jim, following Morris, uh, realising that whatever he has to do, all he has to do is better it. So let's see what happens. Yep, 60 Ks. Timing on the pits. This will give you an idea of how quickly they change a wheel and tyre. Richard's crew have been drilling here over the weekend. They are very, very fast. That's Sorry, the Danny's difference. Away. Just look at that. Three and a bit seconds makes the difference. And Jimmy Richards will come onto the front straightaway again as potentially the leader of the race. When everyone completes their compulsory pit stop, you'll find that it'll be Richards over Morris. And there's the Audi team coming out with Matthew Coleman in car number two at the Oryx Finance Machine. So he's joined back up and we'll have to wait and see as it unfolds whether or not it's been good to Brad Jones. Is at the head of the pack. Jim Richards leading. And leading quite comfortably after that brilliant pit stop. The independence battle continues. Luke Searle here really putting some pressure on Aaron McGill. Comes up on the inside. That was a good pass, actually. Yeah, he did that nicely. So 
a young Luke gets away, we'll see whether or not Aaron can come back behind him. New sponsor, Trinovan, uh, supporting his efforts in the uh, Super Touring Championship and about to put a lap on those two will be Jimmy Richards in car number three. And to his credit, Paul Morris in the Vasari BMW 320 has not thrown this one away. Yes, traffic is going to be on kind here to Jim and it's uh, allowing Paul to get right back up on his bumper bar. It's going to be quite hard to get uh, by this freight train in, in front. But uh, if anybody can do it, Jim Richards has got the uh, wealth of knowledge. Hundreds and hundreds of laps that he's got under his belt. Thousands. Tens of thousands. I'll keep my arithmetic keep going. going here. Yes. It's got a very distinguished pitch, hasn't it, the BMW 320? And as Alan said, Jim doing that very well. Just using the lap traffic to play nicely into his hands. Paul Morris. I can recall, as probably our viewers will, at Malala some weeks ago, the way that Paul Morris used lap cars to keep Richards at bay. That's uh, yes. your order. Oh, Another dear. little tap. These fellas aren't uh, shy about the uh, the bodywork damage. I think they've all got friendly panel beaters. Aaron McGill there in the trend of a number nine car. And Luke Searle, they've been at it since this race started. They're having a terrific dice as independent cup drivers. In the meantime, Jim Richards and Paul Morris, they're the position 7 through 12, Hills, Robson, Orgham, McGill, Searle and Newman. That's your uh, your top 12 from 7 back midfield. Most of those uh, drivers are the independents. away with the lights for Jim. Can't get any closer than that without being brought up in front of the stewards and cost him dearly. He went in very, on the uh, grey matter there. Yes, very hard to be so close to your opposition. You've got to be right on the metal and uh, Paul got a little bit wide into the uh, into the grey matter there where the track was soft and uh, it cost him. It's uh, certainly taking the heat off Jim Richards now. Well, you recall last week's program for the first two uh, championship heats from Winton where uh, Paul got into the side of Jim Richards. It's a marvellous thing how motor racing evens things up. <laughs> a week's a, a week time. later, yes. Have a look at this. So Jim coming into the uh, left-hander. Paul tried to take him on the outside, got on the marbles, and uh, we don't see him do that very often. He's normally very, very careful, but uh, that one uh, let him down. That maneuver let him down. Oh, yes, just far too fast. And on the outside, I don't know why he was thinking he could get away with it. Jim have got on the brakes a little early than you think. <laughs> I doubt it. He got himself positioned where he should have, and it was up to Paul to get by, but with so few laps remaining, I think Paul was prepared to try anything. Well, that takes the pressure off well and truly. Positions, Jimmy Richards, the race leader from Paul Morris, then it's Matthew Coleman, Brad Jones, Mark Adderton, and Anthony Robson. We've seen a great race here, plenty of interest going in it. Number two is Matthew Coleman. He's caught up amongst a whole host here of uh, independents in the last lap of this race. And Brad Jones is right behind him as well. He's driven extremely well, Brad. So Matthew's in third as he comes up on Aaron McGill in the Trinovan car. While this is going on, Jimmy Richards has uh, gotten away from the traffic. <laughs> Look, at, they're all stacked up on the middle here. They just can't get by the slower cars. And you've got to be careful where you, you try and pass, and there's got to be enough room to get two of them through, two Audis. So Brad's holding back. There's no point of, uh, of getting involved in an accident here with... Um, He's number two, so he lets him get clear. In the meantime, this race has well and truly uh, run out of laps. Jimmy Richards in the Volvo S40 coming out of the last corner now across the line, and he thoroughly deserves his win in race number nine of the BOC Gases Championship Series. Second place will go to Paul Morris in the Vasari BMW. Here comes Pistol Pack and Paul out of the last corner across the line. And in third place will be the second of the Audi drivers, and that will be Matthew Coleman. John Cotter, they're happy. So the Volvo team are happy with that. Here are the placings. Jim Richards, the winner over Paul Morris, Matthew Coleman third, Brad Jones was fourth. Mark Adderton got up to finish in fifth spot. Sixth went to Peter Hill, seventh to Anthony Robson, Dean Canto, eighth, David Auger was ninth, and Luke Searle rounded out the top ten in today's race.
the Drivers' Championship, it just doesn't get any closer. Jim Richards on 107 leads Paul Morris on 106. Bradley Jones, 83. Matthew Coleman, 75. And Peter Hills, 51. In the Independence Cup, Peter Hills on 118 looks pretty safe against teammate Dean Cato, 63. John Henderson, 55. Then it's Anthony Robson, 53. And David Auger on 50. The Manufacturers' Crown Volvo, 117 leads Audi, 114. And for the team's title, Audi 202 reverses Volvo, 154. Then it's Team Mondeo, 107. And Racing Projects on 60. Back here at Winton Raceway for what has been the real Wild Wild West show, Team Volvo is all smiles. Brad Jones and Paul Morris dominated last weekend's show, but Gentleman Jim has reigned here today. Let's go down to Charles Stewart. Gentlemen, Jimmy Richards, you were in the wars today, weren't you? <laughs> we had a mixed day, I must admit. Uh, you know, it was one of those days. We, uh, we uh, finished the first race OK, and uh, second race, um, you know, Lost a, a wheel, more or less, got split in half on the start line, so we didn't get any points there, but we managed to win the last race. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're hanging in there, and that's, uh, that's, that's good. And you're still holding on to the lead in the Drivers' Championship by a slender one point. Only just, only just. <laughs> well, well done today, Jimmy, and uh, commiserations for all the damage. Thank you, Tar. Charles Stewart there with today's big winner, Jimmy Richards. Jim doesn't give too much away. He smiles when things are going well and not going so well. And Paul Morris, it's been interesting because in races 7, 8 and 9, we've had three different winners, and that puts Jim one point in front of you for the championship, and the next visit is Oran Park. Yeah, to have three different winners here at Winton is, is great for the series, and for me to come, come away with one point behind Jim is good. We're really looking forward to Oran Park. Tell me this, with Oran Park, the last time you raced there, it was Jim Richards, yourself, and Patrick Watts, the super pom, who were in the grass and out in the track, and a bit of paint was swapped. It seems a track that, if you get off the line, you can make it very, very hard for them. Yeah, we proved that last time. The BMW is a jet off the line, and we managed to keep them at bay for a while, but then Jim passed me, so we've got our work cut out, but uh, we're going to go there and give it our best shot. Congratulations. You're doing very, very well indeed. Thanks, mate. Now, Lamoffet, I'm sure that you will agree with three winners from three different races at Winton when you go to Warren Park. We have that same situation. This championship might not be resolved until grand final, though. I don't think it will be. I think the BMW will show its merits at, at Warren Park, but Jim Richards obviously will have time to work on his car between now and then, and uh, it's going to be a very tight run. Well, we sincerely hope that you've enjoyed the action from Winton Raceway. It doesn't get any closer, does it? A different winner for race seven, race eight, and race nine. The BAC Gases Australian Super Touring Championship is alive and well, and we look forward to your company at Oran Park next weekend.